the world is finally wising up to women's sport. But for the players, there are battles still to be won, like pay inequity, unwanted grabbing, and turning up to a venue with no female bathrooms when you have your period. As a player growing up, I, I was in a, a lot of mixed teams, uh, a lot of boys around. And yeah, it was another a conversation we wanted to speak about. I remember using, you know, used to sneak into the bathroom with the products and kind of hide it. And then there are the uniforms. Well, I've spent most of my career in the national team, about 16 years now, playing in all white. And it's taken till this year when Nike changed our home kit to all black. So it's definitely shifting now that the conversation is out there. Um, no one likes to play in a full white kit, particularly female. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly happy that that's changed. Now, Sport New Zealand's launched the Flow On Effect, a resource that aims to keep women active at all times of the month. It isn't a time you should feel embarrassed. Like I know a lot of girls who just didn't tell their parents and just dealt with it in their own ways and that shouldn't be how you deal with it. My e-cotter does affect me to play sport. You know, my stomach's hurting, my cramps are happening, I'm feeling irritated with my teammates. And I feel as long as you're just expressing that with your girls, that like, this is how I'm feeling, this is my time of the month, that you can connect on that level because you're both women. A former rower, Fern, had to educate her coach. Where I'm from, uh, my iwi, my hapu, we believe that going on the water, even on a boat, if you're on your ikora, that's tapu. But when I let him know, like, this is cultural tikanga, he understood, and he gave me alternatives to do other than going on the boat and going on the water, which I appreciated. Male coaches just need to be more educated on how it affects women and their bodies and their mental health, and just feel sympathy towards us. The flow on effect's ultimate goal is to kick away the stigma and keep conversation flowing. There's certainly an eye on women's sport at the moment and you know to have people getting on board and supporting you know our national teams is, is massive and the more we can you know talk about these types of conversations and make it open and um, you know make people feel confident and you know make sport accessible then I think you know we're in a good place. I think this is this is so good because, um, like, I, I, men don't know anything. Like, they, we have those, those, those uh, TikTok or, or Instagram videos where it's like some person in America interviewing men on college campus about periods and stuff like that, and the men don't know any answers. And I'm pretending to laugh along, but actually, I'm like, I don't know those answers either. <laughs> and and so many of our sports coaches are men, and so they literally, we don't know. We got the you know the anchor man. You know, I hear bears can smell it from a mile away or something like that. We yeah. have so much misinformation. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. amazing that why he never like that are speaking out and just like normalising. Being like, yeah, it's what happens. It shouldn't stop you from playing sport, but it's just something to think about, another thing to knit in, along with your nutrition and your training and whatever else athletes do, I don't know. You've been an elite sportsman for a lot of your life. Do you reckon things are changing? Well, I, n well, I mean, I, I, I can't... Well, I'm a bloke. <laughs> <laughs> Daughter yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I did get cramps in India once. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, my daughter's an athlete. Yeah. Uh, and you know, and they've got, and she's in a group with a male coach, and I know other male coaches with plenty of other female athletes, and and I know that they're aware of it because mm. they have to because mm. it does it affects performance and it affects you, you know, how the, how you will sort of um, train these athletes up to peak performance that they have to be aware of it. Do you think that they know on average how long um, a period might last for a guy? You would obviously know the answer to that. The average period. Yeah, what is the length? <laughs> in, in days. I reckon, I reckon it, I'm going to say if it's one to two days. <laughs> I don't, yeah. Is that not right? Am I not right? It depends no. on how hard you push, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we're starting this conversation. There's obviously still a long I'm not ready. Go. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I need to go to a class. <laughs> I'm scared. That was terrible, Mark, but it was actually very, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on.